Core Necromancer is a very safe option in Guild Wars 2 PvP because all of their shroud abilities are ranged, and while Reaper is much better at carrying and cleaving out downstate bodies, it is a lot more counter playable because the shroud is very melee oriented, and if they get out of range of you, then you can't really hit them. So, Core Necromancer is really good for the ability to kind of have reliable damage and to position yourself more safely. So, a Core Necromancer, even though it does less damage, has all of its range damage in Trout, which means that if you're really good at positioning, you can survive a lot better than a Reaper can. So I'm going to give you guys two Core Necromancer builds. One is going to be a Condi Necro and the other is going to be a Power Necro. So the idea of these builds is basically Core Necros get Doom, which is the longest fear in the game and it's single target. So mostly these are going to be fear oriented builds, but as you can see here, I do not take terror on the Condi version of the build. So let's go over the Condi version first. So the Condi version takes Wizard Amulet and the Traveler Rune. The reason why you take Wizard instead of Carrion is because the Curses trait line. Curses has too much precision synergy for you to really go Carrion because you get bleeds on crit, you get increased condition damage for your precision so it ends up that even though you lose condition damage from wizard amulet you gain it back from the precision because of the conversion so really wizard amulet just does way more damage because it's got similar condition damage as carrion but you also can crit you also need to crit for weakening shroud and stuff like that so you 100 percent go wizard amulet and i go for traveler room because the mobility of a necromancer is very commensurate to their survivability because they don't have all those dodges and blocks that other classes do so they rely on their positioning and having reliable movement speed is what's going to help you to get your positioning then you take the scepter dagger with the doom and exposure sigil the reason for this is because on scepter you usually want to be using feast of corruption very often and very soon when you go in and getting that doom and exposure off is really good for feast of corruption because it does more torment the more conditions you have on the target and both of these sigils give out a condition so that's pretty much why i like those sigils the dagger offhand is really nice because even though warhorn is good and focus is good they don't have as much down cleave so the dagger offhand gives enfeebling blood which is really good for down cleave and deathly swarm is just really insane because it transfers three conditions and then obviously you'll be taking staff which gives a lot of utility with the soul marks trait for unblockable and i take energy and escape sigil because immobilize is pretty detrimental to a necromancer so i like escape and let's go over the traits so you're going to be taking soul marks fear of death which is going to give you life force and longer fears and then doom fire because that'll give you extra damage on your shroud auto attack so you don't have too much damage in your shroud so you want to have that extra damage from doom fire and your shroud autos can actually crit pretty hard like for 2k because of the wizard amulet so it's pretty nice and then in curses you want plague sending and path of corruption so path of corruption is very important most people will take terror but the difference is based on who you're fighting so terror is really good versus people who don't have stun breaks and don't have stability so if you're going versus an engineer and you land a really good terror because they don't have any stun breaks left because they're usually low on stun breaks you can often kill them very easily but see the thing is necromancer already counters engineer so you shouldn't be specking into countering what you counter harder so the reason why i like path of corruption and and also terror is really good versus thieves and mesmers but path of corruption is really good because your shroud 2 skill you're basically going to be using that off cooldown so the two boon corrupt is just so good because not only do you give chill and bleeding on your shroud too, but corrupting two boons can often, in a lot of situations, 
when like you're going against a lich form or you see like a ranger has stability or any kind of like stability just getting fear even if that fear doesn't do damage is detrimental because it allows you to land all of your other damage and terror while yes it is good i'm not saying terror isn't good it can be counterplayed by just fear removal by cleanse or stun break and it's also better in a more tanky meta which we are in right now. So if we we're in a more burst oriented meta, I would say that Terror is better, but for now you take Path of Corruption. And then Weakening Shroud is just really nice because it gives weakness on crits. And whenever you enter Shroud, you will do an Enfeebling Blood, which will actually corrupt boons and give more weakness. It's a really long duration weakness. So what you wanna do when you enter Shroud is you want to be on top of your opponent or usually want to be using shroud as soon as someone jumps on top of you and you'll basically avoid a lot of their damage because you're in shroud and you have your second life force bar but you also will put down enfeeble which will weaken and basically peel for you a lot so it's a really good trait then you have blood magic lesser signet of vampirism which is really good whenever you put four bleeding on a target and what this will do is it will allow you to lifesteal from them and the lifesteal is actually a pretty decent amount of damage it does like 300 per hit so you'll do like 1k damage around from proccing this trait every 20 seconds on a foe that has four bleeding i mean it's pretty nice it's better than the other stuff like this has been nerfed and you're not really using i mean you are using a dagger but you don't really need the movement speed because you have traveler room. And then finally you have Unholy Martyr, really good trait because whenever you leave Shroud it will cleanse three conditions from you and give you life force so it gives you a lot of your life force back but it also really makes you safe because usually when you're in your Shroud that's when a lot of conditions get on top of you because you don't have all your other skills that remove conditions. So generally every time you leave Shroud you are going to have conditions on you. But also when you enter Shroud you're going to be sucking up conditions from all nearby allies. And why that's really good is because with Plague Sending, you will, on your first attack when entering Shroud, which usually is gonna be your Weakening Shroud because when you enter Shroud, you'll have Plague Sending and then Weakening Shroud will also proc that immediately, unless you don't have any conditions on you, obviously. And so you'll basically suck up conditions from your allies and then transfer them to the first target that it hits. So it's a very like hard nuke ability as soon as you go into Shroud. So you want to be playing around that ability to support your team, but also kind of like transfer them to the enemy. And that's why this spec is kind of like really good. It's one of the best Condi countering builds while also being a Condi build that sort of kills Bunker. So it's really good. You'll also notice that I'm taking Corrosive Poison Cloud. So most Necros will take Summon Flesh Worm, Spectral Walk, and then maybe like the Fear Ring. Now the Fear Ring is good, but since I'm not taking Terror, it's not as good. And Corrosive Poison Cloud will give you a projectile block field, which is really good nowadays against Rangers, which do counter Necros. But it's also just really good for Core Necro because they usually don't have amazing down cleave and corrosive poison cloud in a situation where you're playing around a down is just really good because you block all those projectiles that are flying around that situation you're putting poison on the down body and you're weakening everyone it's also pretty good for playing around power classes because of the amount of weakness it gives and you can also give yourself weakness which can then be used with consumed conditions to heal you for more health so I just in general like, um, I just like Corrosive Poison Cloud. Then you're gonna have Flesh Worm and Spectral Walk. These are pretty standard usage uh, utilities for Necros nowadays because you have your two stun breaks, you have your Condi Cleanse, and you have a lot of ways to port around and be slippery because Necros are susceptible to focus and if you're porting around, it makes you hard to focus. So you can do stuff where you like Precast your, you know, your flesh worm somewhere safe in the map, and then someone starts chasing you. You maybe spectral walk, 
and then you worm away, and then you know they support to you, and then you expect to walk back and stuff like that. There's a lot of plays you can make that I'll show you later. It's more situational. And then you have Lich Form. So Lich Form is more of a power skill, but because you gain a lot of precision and you already have a decent amount, Lich Form can hit pretty hard on a Wizard Amulet Necro. But you generally do want to use the 5 skill and the 4 skill every time you go in because, I mean, you're not full power, so your, your auto attacks and Lich aren't going to do amazing damage, but it's good enough. So the normal rotation is going to be, you're going to just like poke with staff from afar and use your 2 and 3 just like that and then you'll use your like staff 5 to fear and then your 2 again. From there you'll decide whether you want to be more aggressive or a little bit passive. So you can swap into your scepter or you can go into shroud depending on if you're being attacked by your opponent or if you just want to keep poking from afar. Now shroud is a little bit different from the scepter because the scepter is more like AoE and the shroud even though it does have good AoE it's more single target so if you're in like an AoE situation you'd want to be using your scepter 2 for the bleed and the scepter 5 for the bleed as well these are kind of like the same ability except enfeebling blood is a little bit more counterplay and then as you see that you've got your conditions on the target because of the sigils right you will piece of corruption and that will give them more condies and torment. So yeah, you wanna usually use Feast of Corruption like a little bit after, maybe like use one skill and then use Feast of Corruption once you've got enough condies. And save your Deathly Swarm for transferring conditions off of you. And that's pretty much how you use the Scepter set. You always wanna use your Scepter 2 and Scepter 5 before going into Shroud. So you'll do like your Scepter 2, Scepter 5, and then your Scepter 3 and then you'll probably want to be in melee range by then so you'll usually be walking up into melee range while you're casting your skills and then you'll go into shroud on top of them and that will do your enfeebling blood and then you'll want to immediately tainted shackles with reveals and puts a lot of pulsing torment on the target and then you can decide whether you want to be single targeting with your doomfire for the uh, burning or you can use Dark Path for the chill and the ability to port to the target three seconds afterwards. And usually you don't want to port to the target unless you're chasing them. Usually you want to keep your distance because Dark Path gets a longer cooldown if you choose to port to it. So you generally want to not use that because you want to be spamming your Dark Path. So usually if you're in melee range, you'll do Tainted Shackles first. And if you're at range, you'll do Dark Path first. So you're going to go into your shroud, you do your 5 if you're in melee, and you do your 2 if you're ranged, and then once you see like a dodge or something, then you'll use your 3 for the fear, and then you can go with the 5 or the 2 respectively. So it's usually 2, 3, 5, or 5, 3, 2, and then once you've used all those, you can just spam your auto attack, or if you really need to, you can life transfer to do a little bit of power damage and to sustain your shroud, like if you're trying to delay how long your shroud lasts. So that's pretty much how the shroud rotations work. And obviously you want to be using your marks. Every time you leave shroud, you want to just spam all of your abilities on your weapons and then swap weapon. And then you want to go in shroud and wait for those abilities to come off cooldown and then go back out of shroud once you finish using your shroud. Usually you want to stay in Shroud for at least 9 seconds because you have a lot of swap sigils and going in and out of Shroud will proc those again. So you'll gain energy, you'll gain doom, you'll gain exposure. So there's a lot of swap sigil synergy with Necromancer. So you basically just use both your weapon sets and then you go into Shroud and then you kind of like reverse the order. So if you're in Staff and then you go into Scepter and then you go into Shroud then you stay in. You leave Shroud, you go into Scepter, and then you go into Staff, and then you go into Shroud. It's pretty simple like that. And you can weave in some Corrosive Poison Clouds in between. And Lich Form if you really need to get like an AoE Fear, or like you're in a heavy situation where you really need to get some presence out. So in this clip, I'll be showing the Condition Necro. And I want to point out my positioning. That's the most important thing to watch. 
the mechanics which allow me to get my positioning but mostly the position because all of the damage that you do can be pretty much done from range so you can do damage to the enemy without taking damage yourself and that's why the build is so safe it allows you to basically give presence to your team without really sacrificing your positioning so in this team fight we are looking for a target and I'm just spamming out my weapon skills and I put the corrosive poison cloud on the node and it's not like anyone can see that because there's so many other animations going off so actually their ranger stands in the middle of my corrosive poison cloud and dies to that so that's pretty nice and as soon as they go down I put down my uh, shroud 5 and 4 and I just try to do as much AOE cleave as possible it's not amazing but it's good enough if my, you know, the rest of my team is there. Now I'm going to try to secure this kill here and I see that my team is probably going to cleave that out. So I chase the kill into home with their dragon hunter who's probably low on cooldowns. I get stuck in their dragon mob but because I have so much condition cleanse on this build I'm actually very safe. So I get that kill and now I probably want to auto attack, yeah I'm auto attacking here for a little bit of shroud but then I rotate into mid because my team over rotated out of mid so now I've got to fight this core necro. He prematurely liches so I don't really need to go in but I'm going to try to corrupt the stability to get more fears here and yeah that gets me a really long fear duration and even though I don't have terror for the fear damage just the fact that I'm fearing them is enough. And I actually double dodge there to avoid their uh, terror, like their fear, but um, they didn't end up using it. So yeah, avoiding a core necro's fear is pretty important, even if they're not using terror. Uh, here we're in like a 4v2, I believe. Yeah, this is like a 4v2. One thing that core necro isn't amazing at is snowballing kills really fast. It's one of the more gradual DPS necro builds, but it is very good in like even fights. You don't want to be like outnumbering too much on core necro. It isn't really a duelist build, but you want to be in like smaller scale fights usually as a core necro. Not too large of a fight because support kind of makes this build feel like it doesn't do that much damage, but you know like 2v2 even 1v1 is, is good enough, right? Because this can do a little bit of 1v1ing and dueling, especially versus certain classes that it wins the matchup versus, like maybe like a warrior or an engineer. But I'm just trying to, so here, right, I am capping the bell, which is the very important objective, while providing support to my team. Now, obviously, it's situational when you want to be standing on nodes, so if the enemy is standing on node and my team is standing on node I don't need to stand on node but if I need to stand on a node and my team and the enemy are fighting off the node I can still give presence to that fight while standing on node and contesting nodes to basically get a lot of value for my team by playing the role of a node holder sort of like in these larger fights so I rotate out of far and we're up 100 points. I put down a mark there just so I can put that guy in combat so he can't rotate as fast. And I go into mid, I unblockable fear mark the ranger's block. So that really, you know, catalyzes or makes the kill go a lot faster because of that. So you want to be saving your fear mark a lot of the time to interrupt key skills. And now my necro or my scourge is being outnumbered so we're coming here to try to save them i am going to enter into shroud probably okay i could have entered into shroud to condi cleanse them with the unholy martyr but i think i had already expected them to die and not to have a chance of saving them so i use my worm to get out which i placed a really long time ago and because i have the blood magic passive i can actually fight around this res here because the necro in down state is pretty powerful because they can heal themselves with their auto attack and do decent damage and I get the fear to prevent the stomp and I'm just trying to cleave out this thief and we actually revive in like a 2v3 obviously it was a lot to do with the enemy misplaying that but it also shows the power of 
Core Necro because a lot of their abilities, you don't need to sit there and do them. They kind of set it and forget it, right? So I could play around rezzing my teammate while also putting down my damage in between and counter pressuring so that they can't play as aggressively to keep the down. So yeah, Core Necro is really good at being focused because of that reason. And you can see here my teammate DC, so we're in a 4v5, so this may turn around. But yeah, as I was saying, Core Necro is a very good spec for being countered or like focused because a lot of your abilities, as I said, you set them and forget them. Like your Shroud 5, all you need to do is a really quick animation and then it starts pulsing out. And here, I use Dagger 4 at the very end of their Shroud 5 so that I transfer the Torment back to them. So that's really good timing there. But yeah, most of your attacks you can get the value from just by like going into like an instant cast animation or just from really far range. So it's pretty easy for you to have presence as a core necro as long as you just press your shroud 5 as I'm doing and just run around and press shroud 4. You don't really need to aim that. And here I try to, if I landed my shroud 2 there I would have corrupted that. I do have my Corrosive Poison Cloud down here, but I'm getting pulled by the Burn Gauge. They don't really care about projectile blocks, so I'm going to die here. We do have our full team back now, so we're, we're still in position to win, so this is fine. I'm going to respawn and probably... Well, my team is doing pretty okay despite us being outnumbered. We're regrouping pretty okay. Uh, my other necro is capping home, so I probably want to go into mid. I just put my worm in my base, so you can actually see on the mini map where your worm is. There's like a little green dot. So if you're ever wondering where your worm is, just look for the mini map, and that'll tell you where it is. In case like you wanna like port in a specific direction, you don't just want the stun break. So I'm chasing the ranger here with the auto attacks. The scepter is very reliable damage because there's really no animation to it and it's just yeah it's such a reliable damage so if someone's low and they have a lot of like evades left you want to be spamming scepter autos and they're probably going to get this res here because the ranger you know pet's going to res on top of that other guy resing so i go into lich to try to finish this kill and i use the five and then just spam one and two at the same time because two is no animation so you can use it while using all your other skills and then just spamming the one. I put down all my AoE here, the Corrosive Poison Cloud as well, so there's really no hope for that res for them. So I have a lot of conditions out, and I get a nice fear on this Core Necro, and I'm just spamming my auto attack. You can see a 2.4k damage, plus the burning on my Doomfire with the Life Blast. So yeah, your auto attacks still do pretty decent damage in Shroud, but generally it's not good enough to just stay in shroud and use that if all of your other abilities are off cooldown. You want to be using those and then Doomfire is kind of like something you just fill in the gaps. So we get all of these downs here but my Ellie is my Ellie's disengaging so they're doing fine. I put down Corrosive Poison Cloud on these down bodies so that I don't get hit by the Ranger's projectiles while I'm cleaving. And now we can rotate into the bell and we can snowball this. Yeah, we're like gonna 4v1 this guy, so we're gonna win the bell. We're probably gonna win the match off of this fight as well. And I just go in. We're, we're like 5v2ing now, so we just immediately kill these. Not really much here to do. Just pressing two buttons, really. And yeah, that's pretty much gonna be the match. So yeah, as I said, watching your mechanics and understanding which skills you can use from range and in using that, you can position yourself very well to play very safe, and that gives you a lot of sustain and survivability on this build, while also having the Wizard Amulet, which is a little bit more of a aggressive and squishy variant, but in my opinion, the necessary choice. So that is the Condi Necro. The next build is a power-oriented version of basically a core necromancer and you'll be using basically this it's kind of like the same idea really you have the staff or the range kind of like pressure and utility and then you'll be using the fear traits 
and instead of Doomfire, you will be using Death Perception, which will give you crit chance and ferocity while in Shroud. So you can do quite a bit of damage with power while you're in Shroud, and your auto attack, the Life Blast, instead of doing Burn, will just kind of crit pretty hard. I mean, 2.6k is pretty good for a very, like, homing in missile. 3k there on a light target, so yeah, it adds up a lot of damage over time. And since you're so tanky in Shroud, and people usually want to disengage from you when you're in Shroud, it allows you to basically be harder to counterplay. Like That's the whole point of uh, Core Necros, it's harder to counterplay than Reaper. And you'll also be using Unholy Martyr, just like the Kandi build, and you'll be using Vampiric Presence. Now you also have a choice between Signet of Vampirism or the Well of Blood, since it doesn't really matter because both of them are not really that high effect. You can just choose which one you want. And then in Spite, so instead of Curses, you'll take Spite, and that'll give you more focus and axe recharge and more damage to targets without boons. You'll have Chill of Death, so whenever something is below 50% HP, you'll remove three boons to basically secure the kill. And then you have Dread, which is whenever you fear a target, you will gain five seconds of quickness and 10 seconds of fury. So this is Basically the difference between a Reaper and a Core Necro is that you get quickness out of Shroud rather than in Shroud, and you also get Fury. So a lot of your damage while in Shroud is going to be boosted by the fact that you have 33% extra crit chance. But when you're not in Shroud, you don't have that much Fury, right? So Dread gives you that Fury you need to make your Axe skills do a lot more damage. So a Core Necro does a lot more damage out of Shroud than a Reaper does and that means that you have a lot more range pressure as well. Not just because your shroud does more damage at range, but also your axe and your staff skills are gonna have quickness, which allows you to do some cool stuff. So I take the Marauder Amulet and the Lynx Rune. You get the movement speed similarly to the Traveler Rune, but since this is a power build, I like to have Lynx instead. And then you have Revocation Exposure, so same idea, you want the Vulnerability on Swap, because Vulnerability gives your Axe 2 a lot more synergy because it's kind of like double the effect of Vulnerability on your Axe. And Revocation just to remove Boons because you don't like Boons. Same thing on Staff, you have Energy and Exposure because you don't want to have your... You want to have access to your dodges and you don't want to be immobilized, which means you can't dodge. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You just use your Axe 2 off cooldown. This is your big damage ability and your Axe 3 when you're kiting because it can be used from any direction. Use your Axe 4 just to gain a little bit of life when you've got no other, like all your other abilities are on cooldown, just use your Focus 4. And Spinal Shivers is kind of like how you catch up with someone. So if you're at like max range, you can get a massive chill on them. And if you remove boons, it'll do a ton of damage. So it's just really good for like your engage skill. And then you just have normal staff as usual. The four skill will convert conditions. So usually, even though your power build will be scaling more with Future Mark, you don't want to just throw this out there because the power build has a lot less condition cleanse on it than the Condi one. So you want to save Future Mark for like a Condi cleanse usually. And then you will have Spectral Ring instead of the Corrosive Poison Cloud because while you are fearing people, you can do a lot of burst damage to them. You don't get as much value from fearing people on a Condi build as you do from the power one. So one thing that's really cool on this build is that because you get quickness out of Shroud, your Lich form can have quickness. So you can do like a fear, and you, your internal cooldown on Dread, by the way, is three seconds. So if you get five seconds of quickness, and then wait three seconds, you can get like a lot more duration of you know, quickness. And then you go into Lich, and you have another fear in Lich, and then you have quickness Lich. And as you can see, the quickness Lich autos demolish. So yeah, Quickness Lich is pretty insane. It just does not use lube. And yeah, that's pretty much the idea. You just want to be doing a lot of range damage 
with this build. Use your axe to off cooldown for the omega damage. Just fear people and get chills and boom rips on them just to keep distance because you don't really need to be in melee range at all with this build unlike the Condi build where you want to enter shroud in melee. The only thing that really does melee damage on this build is tainted shackles and sort of life transfer. Everything else doesn't really require proximity. So that's really the reason why this build is so good is all of its damage can be done from a safe distance. So I know a lot of new players like to just stand on the node, so this might not be the best for them. But if you are very good at positioning, you can actually survive a lot of situations and still be very present for your team and give them damage. So yeah, I really like this version of the build. And now let's get into the full match. So this is the power version of the Condi Core Necro build. And you're gonna be using the Quickness Trait, Dread, and you're gonna be using the Axe Focus. So it's pretty similar to the Condi build. You're gonna have that range damage. You wanna be focusing on keeping positioning and even more so with the power build because it is squishier but it has access to more ranged damage because the shroud skills that you'll be using are mostly the shroud 4 and the shroud 1 whereas the Condi build kind of wants to be in melee range more often because you have the enfeebling blood which is going to proc on top of you when you go in shroud and then you want to be in melee range for the shroud 5. The power build doesn't really use Shroud 5 for damage, it uses it for like the reveal or the immobilize, and it doesn't really use the 2 for damage, it uses it for utility. So you're mostly doing your 4 and your 1 for damage, and then obviously you want to be fearing for CC on both builds. So because of that, you have a lot more ranged damage on the power build, because you're spamming your 1 more often, which is pretty long range. And as you can see here, we're actually going versus a very bunkery comp. The enemy team has a support tempest, a bunker herald, and I believe a sort of um, side noter warrior. And then they have uh, like a scourge and like a condi soul beast. And scourge is like one of the more tanky versions of necromancer. So yeah, we're going versus a full bunker comp on legacy. And legacy mid node is one of the hardest nodes to decapture because it's so big and close to the respawn and since they already own that node and they're running a bunker comp it's really not worth it to try to team fight them there it's better to split them up and in smaller situations or when they leave it to try to match numbers to decap it then so i immediately go to far and i ping to our team to go home and we can play sides and yeah, this isn't like the best 1v1 build. The Condi build is definitely better at 1v1ing. But sometimes you have to adapt to what your team needs and to what the enemy team is doing. So I'm going far and we're going to play sides. And I'm kind of like putting marks here. This is really important to use marks to bait out dodges before like um, an enemy will approach you. You can put down marks and if they want to get hit by the marks that's fine and all but if they don't then they're gonna to have to use dodges and that allows you to land your abilities more reliably so I've waited here for quite some time and that's because if I get decap it's gonna take a really long time to full cap it again if we're going against a bunker comp but I do realize that they are now coming towards me and they're actually going to 2v1 me with the scourge and the condi uh, soul beast so that's most of their damage here, which means that my team is not really rotating very well because they're trying to outnumber basically all the bunkers on their team. So I do go into Lich here and I get the quickness off, but I have weakness on me. So my Lich is or slow as well. So I'm not really doing too much with the quickness Lich there. Just a little bit of vitality. And I'm running out of Shroud here because the Immobilize gets me. But I do survive long enough for my teammates to arrive. And I don't think they're going to be able to res me because the trap ranger is going to have too much cunt. Yeah, and the uh, scourge as well. Just too much pressure. So my team does arrive though, but they over rotate because they leave their home. Um, our ranger is watching home from the ledge, so we'll see how that works out. But yeah, they come into far maybe a little bit too late. 
but they're starting to get kills now. I think we have a Berserker Warrior, so we definitely have damage. Now I see that our Ranger is going to be 1v1ing the Bunker Herald. I do not want to plus one that, even though uh, the lifesteal on this build is pretty good for killing bunkers. I really don't want to deal with that and waste time since we already own the node at home. As it gets decapped, I say that. But now we're dying at far because I they let me die. And I just go for the node because I don't want them to full cap it. So now I'm versus the Tempest and the Scourge. And this is going to be a very hard fight for me because the Scourge, yeah, maybe it's not the like highest amount of damage. But the Tempest can CC me and make me stand in the Scourge's damage. So trying to get off the node a little bit to survive and just stall as much time as possible because I know that my team probably isn't doing too much else on the map so I don't want to die. I do want to hold the node as long as I can so as long as I have cooldowns I will hold this node but as soon as I'm out of cooldowns yeah I'm gonna get out of there. I have my worm as you can see on the map already precasted so as soon as I think I'm out of cooldowns I will take it out and now I'm just going to leave and let them have the node. So dying is obviously really bad and I'm going to just leave and go into mid. Somehow we're dying at mid even though we've been outnumbering but you know you don't really try to think about these things too much of like why your team is making mistakes because then you're over analyzing like suboptimal plays. You just have to do what is best and what is best right now is just surviving while my team regroups and finding a location. So the fact that I left far is good because now far is open to being decapped. Whereas if I kept trying to contest it earlier, well then they would stay there and defend it. But since I kind of baited them to rotate into mid, now they over invest into mid. I do end up going for the decap only and I see that their bunker rev is actually here. So. I don't want to give a full cap to a bunker rev because that's just going to give them a really good situation. But the ranger arrives, so now I'm in a 1v2. And I know that the bunker rev can't really do damage, so I'm really just going to CC the ranger and just try to survive. This is actually a really good situation for me because the bunker rev is kind of like wasting time if they're outnumbering. And I lich, I get the quickness lich even though I have a little bit of weakness on me, so it's not going to be as effective as I want. So I'm not really getting too much value out of the quickness sledge here. But we get the down, and we know that a, this is a good situation, right? Like me and a rev versus a bunker rev and a ranger, they can't really do much together because the bunker rev is really supposed to be by itself. And to be honest, don't play bunker rev, please. It's, it's not fun. And uh, yeah, so now we're outnumbered. The rev is actually peeling for me here, which is nice. So I get out and that shows that my teammates actually kind of know how to disengage fights, which is promising, but we do want to hold the line here. We don't want to let them get on the mid because if they get on the mid, then they have an advantage because we have to stand on the node. But the rev ignores that and jumps on the node anyways. So now we have to fight over the node and my teammates are going to chase that, which is probably not optimal, and I am forced to 1v1 the warrior, which is not optimal at all either because I had just used all my cooldowns in that fight, and this warrior just comes off spawn, and he's a 1v1 build, and I'm not the Condi Necro version, right? I could probably 1v1 warrior on the Condi build because I have a lot of weakness, but the power build is a lot squishier, so definitely don't want to be 1v1ing on this build against a dedicated 1v1. I do see that the ranger is coming to fight me so I get a nice fear and actually that pushes them into the team fight and gets them killed which is pretty convenient allows me to push far and I see that the yeah, the rev is going to come here to try to contest me and the thing is while I probably can't kill them it's probably good enough for me to just be pressuring them and they Potentially could get the decap and the full cap on me because it's a like very high knockback oriented build But I do know how to play around this build because you just have to dodge the tablet when it like the vine goes up it that means it's gonna blow up like that and Then I also have to dodge the glint elite, which is a very obvious animation So I'm fine here. 
but now I'm outnumbered. And this Condi Ranger, yeah, the fact that they're just a Condi Ranger is just like, and they're outnumbering, like a Condi Ranger dies very easily, but when they're outnumbering, it's really good. So I use my Lich here, and I get the nice fear and a quickness Lich, spamming auto attack, I get the down really fast. So there, there we finally get off a really good Lich here. And here the Rev goes for the Res, but because of that, I can actually cleave the down while also standing on the node, making the Rev choose between resing or holding the node, which allows me to cleave the Ranger more reliably and get it low enough that the Ellie can't even res it with their Glyph. So we have a lot of cleave here now with the other Rev on my team, and they have a lot of projectile reflex, so I use my Life Transfer, which is really versatile with how wide the range is and I keep standing on the node because I don't want that rev to get off and start supporting their team and at this point we don't need to push into far so I just chase their Ellie into mid and I let that bunker rev stay there so starting to finally get a hold of the map and then we lose home because we're over rotating so this is why bunker comps are kind of like effective in solo queue because if you rotate poorly they have an advantage and because we're over rotating a lot of the time they're able to get a lot of decaps on us that they really shouldn't because they don't have the sheer force to to basically force us to give them the decap so i see that they're gonna like three or four v1 that so i watch for mid because i know that the ranger is going to try to decap and i really don't want to be keeping you know getting decap for free here and now the scourge is jumping on me putting down wells I want to get out of that as I said having a lot of ability to position yourself on this build and still do damage is really good and now we're in like a 2v3 or is this yeah it's like a 3v3 now but our rev is really low they get their heal off though and they actually get the down so this is nice I'm just holding the node while also giving presence in the fight here so this is really important right because the mid node is very important but if we lose the fight, then we could lose the node if I die. So, right, like the fact that I'm giving presence in that fight is really important, but also not giving up, you know, mid legacy because it's one of the more valuable nodes in the game. So, yeah, we pretty much win at this point. And yeah, it just shows you kind of like how to position on this build a little bit. The power of a quickness lich if you time it really well. And. Yeah, it's just really fun to have quickness on a like axe macro. So I mean, usually I would play the core build, but the uh, the core Condi build, but the power one can be kind of fun and is better in like more bursty situations where you know if you're playing around someone who has a lot of sustain and Condi cleanse, then you might want to just have power damage and then coordinate with your team. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I really think that Core Necro is like not a hyper meta build. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more. And also comment down below what you guys think about that quickness lich. Is that, does that need to be changed? I think it's pretty balanced and I will see you guys next time.